Hey, well, welcome back to the bench. Happy May 4th. Um, I'm going to do my best to uh, share with y'all exactly what's going on here. Um, you're not going to be able to see a lot in this, but what I'm doing is I'm placing gussets on the interior of the top of this guitar to strengthen the top of this guitar so that it does not uh, crack any further. Got a pretty serious uh, crack in the top and just as a precursor as to what I've done um, I have placed a clamp on either side of the top of this guitar to push the crack together as close as I can get it and I have made uh, little gussets here that I will apply glue to We'll get these uh, glued up and I've cleaned the area with um, some Ronsonol lighter fluid uh, to remove any oils uh, or material uh, that would be on those uh, in that area so that the glue has a good surface to stick to and I will um, get y'all pointed in here and close to the action I'm going to put four gussets in here. Number one, I'm going to wipe some glue away from this. We'll get you on the inside here and let you take a look at what's happening here. Just, uh, I used Tight Bond Original to do these types of repairs. Um, tight Bond is a really great glue. You're able to wipe it and clean it up with uh, water. Even if it hardens, you can get it wet and it will uh, it will come loose. And uh, neodymium magnets. Woohoo! These things want to stick to each other. As uh, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna put one on the interior of this. I'm gonna place it right on top of the. And I'll get you in here. You can take a look at what I've done. And then I want to hold that one in place. And I'm going to place the magnet on the top to hold that gusset in place. It creates a little bit of pressure on that to get the, um, the glue to hold. And what we have is this on the inside of this guitar. I'm going to let you all take a look here. So I've got a gusset and the magnets holding the, the gusset in place. Uh, so I've done that. Um, now it's time for uh, doing a second uh, gusset. I'm hoping you can see that. Let's take a look at the video. And oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to continue. I'm going to put one more uh, right near that one. You've got to be sure to get enough glue in here. A little bit of water doesn't hurt anything. It kind of helps the glue penetrate uh, the wood. Uh, in my humble opinion, it is uh, sometimes a good thing to get a little bit of water mixed in with the glue. You want to get plenty of glue on there uh, so that we've got plenty of material to, to stick. And we'll go back. Ooh, I've got skin peeling off my finger. I need to. I need to take a loofah. I need to get me a loofah. I like to use a paintbrush to apply glue. Um, gives good, um, good coverage. And we'll drop that one into place. Put it right next to the brace there. And again, we'll clean up the uh, excess glue. I'm going to keep this stuff clean so it looks like I did a clean, nice clean job. That looks great. I'm going to use a, my paintbrush. Get a little bit more of that glue cleaned up. There we go. And time for our second magnet. These magnets are monumentally hard to get apart. 
like really hard to get apart. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this magnet right here. Yeah, it's stuck to the other one. I'm a little bit afraid of that. Let's flip that over. Oh boy. They don't want to do that. We might have to spread these out a little bit further. Rehearsals are always uh, important. And I have rehearsed this uh, clamping. I'm going to drop that right there. And I'm hoping if I can get enough distance between these two magnets, I can... I'm going to use a different style of magnet here on this second. Yeah, try to pull these apart. Hey, Just. What's happening, brother? Hope you're having a great day. Whew, boy, these babies are hard to get apart. Okay. Okay. I need some oh my god. Don't don't uh don't expect there to be an easy button on this. Um okay. I'm gonna place this here. There I am. Not so yet, and of course, okay. We're gonna, two of them's okay on that. Wanting to just separate. I may have these so close in such close proximity. There we go. I'm gonna flip this one over. I'm going to attempt to use a different magnet on this one just to see what's going on here. I may have to use that. Let's see. There we go. All right. And we'll shift this one over. So these magnets are all pulling against each other. Uh, and this is what she looks like now. Um, <laughs> a lot of fun. So I've got two of the gussets uh, in place at this point. I'm gonna do more let's get some uh, let's get some glue on here just keep moving forward put a dead center in between these braces there we go it's nice to be able to work through the back of a guitar if this was a regular acoustic I wouldn't be doing this I'd have to do all this work from through the sound hole that's always fun. Yo. Yeah, dude. Uh, and, you know, if anybody else is here, uh, what Justin is talking about in the chat, um, he's been uh, doing the, um, going from using uh, Pro Tools to using um, Reaper um, on a Windows machine. And uh, 
he is a very uh, long time he's been using Pro Tools about as long as anybody could possibly use it and uh, Avid has uh, done stuff with their pricing and made it pretty unaffordable uh, it didn't make sense uh, for him to continue using the Avid products um, and fortunately he's got friends in low places <laughs> right hey Timothy hey good to see you man okay yeah that's cool brother um, and Justin uh, is a one of the he is a remarkable audio engineer. I've heard a lot of mixes and I've been uh, he's helped me with mixes on my own music and uh, we've been friends for a long time going on 20 years now and uh, really fun to watch him uh, very well uh, educated in the world of computers um, and I got to sit and literally watch him during a, uh, a live face-to-face -face live chat. Oh, God, getting these magnets apart. This is a pain in the neck. They stick to every, anything metal. Uh, they're not, not real simple. Okay, so I need to get this magnet. And I can see through the crack, and that's kind of cool. Boom. I said boom. There we go. So there's our third um, brace in place right there, probably upside down and backwards. We've got three uh, gussets in place in there. Uh, that one went in nice and tidy. Yeah, yeah, Timothy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Rody. Welcome back, bro. Getting back to it. Um, getting these gussets put in place i've got one more to do uh here I'm trying to do them as quickly as i can to keep my glue from drying out this one's a little bit further back it's right near i'm going to glue it right near the edge where the side or the the bowl we'll, we'll call it a bowl where the bowl meets the um top of the guitar I want to keep that part from separating any further. The idea behind this is to stop this guitar from um, incurring any more damage, I suppose, from this crack in the top of this thing. We're not going to repair the crack 100%. My goal here is just to stabilize it so that it won't split anymore. This guitar, Ovation guitars, are really built to be plugged in in most cases they just sound fantastic um, plugged in so again I want to be really careful get this gusset in just the right spot I know you guys can't see much here and I'm sorry about that but well I'm not that sorry uh, <laughs> but i wish you could see what i'm up to here so um, i'm gonna wipe that one down i got a little bit of glue spreading around in there yo hat what's up hey hugh i'm sorry i missed your um your debut uh but i went and watched the uh video i still have your uh channel um uh rolling on my youtube um and here's a little uh Here's a little uh, something that we can all do for our fellow uh, YouTube users, and that is um, find a playlist that they have uh, with a bunch of material on it, and go ahead and push play on that playlist and let it roll on your YouTube feed forever. Just let it go, and that'll get their watch time up. Um, for guys like Hetriani, um, I think I don't know of uh, other other uh, Jade Star, um, you know, Gary Hubs, um, these these guys that have you know fairly well visited um, YouTube channels. You can really help um, help them out a lot by simply um, just putting a playlist on. You don't have to watch everything, but it really helps their time. Uh, move up 
the watch time. There we go. Let's get that. There we go. Now we got a good, good solid. All right, so I'm gonna get my flashlight out and show you all what we've done here. I'm using magnets. Um, and I know this is kind of sideways maybe a little bit for you. Um, and I might, my voice might be getting really loud, but we've placed magnets on top of the uh, gussets that are in inside this guitar. And we're stopping that crack from spreading anymore. And we've uh, aligned the, the grain of the wood on the gussets to be um, cross grain to the wood. So the grain, the grain on the top of the guitar is traveling this direction and the grain on the gussets is traveling this direction it'll keep those things from separating ever again this guitar should be um, back in business uh, very soon I'm gonna go hang this bad boy up I've got a, a clamp on it and let me kind of give you the full full view of what's going on here All right my uh, clamps have rubber feet on them they are not touching not to mention this is plastic so I've squeezed the top together a little bit and we've got magnets on the top and in the back to hold those gussets in place and get a little uh, wood and I'm seeing when I put the magnets on there I could see a little bit of squeeze out which is awesome you cannot starve a glue joint I don't think anything can clamp hard enough. You might be able to do it if you clamp two pieces of glass together and squeeze all of the glue out, but I've heard people talk about, you know, you starve a, a glue joint. Ask me if it's ever happened. <laughs> nope. Okay, let's put this guy away. Um, Owen, check this out. I have these t-shirts that, uh, you could probably get. I've been waiting to start digging into this one. Hello. <laughs> I've been waiting to start digging in to this. Let me get my camera back down here. I don't have a, a film staff. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Got to do it all. That's how most uh, YouTube channels work. Kind of fun. All right, um, I want to get these magnets cleaned up here because they will stick to everything. So I'm gonna flip this one. There we go. Put these little, I'm putting these little pieces of plastic in these back in these magnets, kind of fun, so I can get them apart. My goodness. There we go. I've got a foundation. Oop. So now I'll be able to get those apart. Kind of fun. All right. Uh, so what we have next on the bench. A lot of, you know, moving from one right to the next. Waiting for glue to dry. Uh, feast your eyes on this bad boy. This is a uh, Fender. What is this thing called? It's a uh, Acoustasonic guitar. <laughs> um, plays beautifully. Brand spanking new. Um, <clears throat> So a little bit about the uh, owner of this instrument. She plays um, a lot of tenor guitar and um, plays a lot of uh, mountain dulcimer. And um, she wants me to turn this 
beautiful six string brand spanking new acoustasonic fender guitar into a tenor guitar are you guys cringing at this point or <laughs> oh yeah I'll get you one hat I'll have to send one to you brother um, yeah Oh, Ralph. Hey, welcome, Ralph. Hey, I didn't see you were here. I haven't been able to keep up on everything. You haven't worked on one yet, Hugh. Uh, these things, actually, I've set one of these up before. Uh, it was a brand new one. They got it, and we're not happy with the setup. And the guy that owns that guitar is a very um, discerning guitar player. A very, very good guitar player, I'll say. Um, of course, he wouldn't say so, but... That's how we kind of all are. I need to get rid of that. Uh, that will make a mess on my bench. Um, and so, um, what we have to do with this to turn this into a tenor guitar is number one, decide how we're going to tune it. Typically, it's an open G, but she likes um, what she calls um, Irish tuning. Uh, so, probably going to do a custom set of strings on this to get the tuning exactly right. Uh, the electronics on this uh, I haven't even plugged it in let's see what it sounds like uh, plugged in real quick um, let's see where am I oh. I just want to get a good taste of how this thing feels and plays before I uh before I alter uh, this beautiful instrument. Really nice guitar. These are rather expensive too, I think. Um, anybody know what the price on one of these is? Tom, welcome. Petriani, good to see you. Zach, good to see you. Hugh, it's so good to see you. Congratulations on your new release today. I hope that uh, it gets thousands of views and moments. Um, okay. Let me uh, position my camera so that we can uh, see. I'll lift that up a little bit. I'm going to turn my little toy amplifier on. I should show you guys my toy amp. You'll love that. It's funny. Oh, I got to plug something in down here. I remember yesterday I was testing pedals for a customer and, and had to uh, had to change some stuff. You. Oh, yes. So this goes. You should see my pedal layout down here. You guys laugh. Alright, so. There we go. Power. I'm gonna power it up. Boom. There's the power. Kaboom. Smack. Boom. Smack. You being Batman. You guys know that Adam West lived in Walla Walla? Walla Walla, Washington. All right. Right down the road from us here. Boom. Smack. Pow. Oh. Power. Oh, yeah. That should do it.
bass to play. Bent the strings completely out of tune now. Feels pretty nice though. on the intonation on this guitar. I'm just kind of using my ear to hear how this guitar is in tune with itself. It's definitely in tune with the tuner. intonation of a guitar just by ear. Sounds pretty good. Um, there's the old uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. great to play um, just as a guitar Let get my uh, let's check our string action here man it's perfect well no it's not it's a little bit high on the treble uh, side of the We've got about a 64th strings. I don't like bending 12s. And, and the strings need to be stretched. Um, but things sounds great. Um, it does have um, a USB uh, port on it, I believe, uh, for charging the preamp. And also, I believe that you can send um, alternate guitar sounds uh, that you've downloaded from Fender or shared. I'm not 100% certain and that really is at this point of no uh, consequence to me. My uh, job is to turn this into a tenor guitar which means uh, a new nut probably. I might try and reuse this one um, and uh, probably a new saddle. And We'll see how that all goes. So, um, first thing I'm going to look at here, I'll bring you up here with me, is the nut spacing on this. Um, this is one of the more important parts of doing this. We'll get you down here close. Um, so, obviously, the nut has six strings on this, and we're going to turn it into a four string guitar, a tenor guitar. And oh my goodness, do I actually own one of these? Yeah. Um, there's a one, two, three, four, and I'm looking at these, I'm, I'm starting at the widest space I can find on this, um, for space in these, probably going to have to, yeah, I might have to do some, uh, 
want to this is a, typically a tenor guitar is going to have a much narrower neck so we're going to end up with the the g string we'll just call it mandolin tuning the g string and the high e string we'll just say that for now um a little bit closer in from the edge so we're probably going to end up with some spacing around like that maybe uh, so if i squeeze these these together we're going to end up something like that and you can see so we're going to end up having to space that differently um, I think the best thing I can do right now is to pull some wires off of this so that I can start uh, looking at it. I'm not worried about the string action. Everything's going to change because I'll have to do um, work with the, uh, the truss rod because of the tension on this. Taking a brand new set of strings off of a brand new guitar. Amazing. I think this guitar was bought um, brand spanking new. It came in in a Fender case and it was wrapped in plastic and the whole nine yards, which I was really happy about. It was shipped uh, from Chicago, uh, where the owner, uh, the new owner of this guitar, had purchased it from. All right. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what's happening over here in the chat. How, I hope you all are having a good discussion. Everybody's being cool. Uh, it does have a wound G string. Uh, David, welcome. Uh, yeah. That thing uh, feels really nice to play, just as it is. It'd be... I'd... I'd I'd go do a gig with it right now. It doesn't need really any um, any setup um, per se. You need this. Hello. I would like. That has to be placed. It's Bluetooth. Um, you can add satellite gauge to it down the road if you want. Not that you, you get to come with it, but it comes with the control part and the deck so we can control the tuner if we ever. Because they don't have XM right now. Alright, but you could always add that if you want to. Yeah. So that would be the deck. Okay. And then you have 300 parts. I'll blow this back up. All right. This has an ebony fingerboard. That's pretty cool. I like ebony. It looks nice. It's got some white or lighter uh, markings on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, about fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is really in good shape. The fretwork is really well done. It's not. Uh, doesn't have the. Uh, cheese grater frets going on all right let's get some string spacing uh designated here i'm gonna grab my uh favorite pencil i think here it is mm -hmm. let me throw my tools all over the place okay let's get you back down here by the nut this is where stuff's gonna really get started i'll try and keep my arm out of the movie so I want to space this four strings. So we're going to have to use, boy, let me move this. Might have to do alternate spacings on this. Really, I don't want to, this is going to be a completely custom, uh, custom spaced I'm not gonna <laughs> make the neck narrower um, let's do this let's measure what's the width of our neck I'll turn this on we're gonna go to uh, 
Come on. We're gonna go to the thousand seven inch. Wow, well, wide are we here? Okay, so we're at sixteen point nine. Oh, come on. Wow. <laughs> Let's try this again. I'm gonna zero it out. I keep pushing the button. Zero. Here we go. So we've got. So we've got <clears throat> one point seven inches. Let's divide that by four. <clears throat> you got your calculator handy. Look at that, Jade Star's got a new video up. Can you believe it? Okay, where's my calculator? <clears throat> um, uh, calculator. 1.7 divided by 4. 0.425. All right. So that would 0.425 between each string would give a real even string spacing. And that's inches. It's not metric. I'm using uh, inches. This is an American-made Strat, so everything's done standard, I, I assume. Um, so, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's take our... Now, I know it's upside down, um, but let's look at 0 0.425, 0 0 0.427, 0 0.4255, 0 0.4255. Got to get that just nuts on. Got to get it. It's not so easy. There we go. Okay, so 0 0.425. Let's just see what things look like. If we space them like that that's the whole distance I'm gonna I'm gonna shrink that down to uh, again we're doing this custom so you know a lot of uh, eyeball can be used uh, to do this um, so we're at 0 0.425 I'm gonna make that 0 0.39 there we go hello young man Yeah, there we go. You know who Robin is? I haven't seen her yet today, uh, but she'll be here, I'm sure. We haven't heard that she wasn't going to be here today, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she will just hang in there. If, you, uh, if you'd like, uh, you can make yourself right at home in the lesson room. Okay. And let's just see. Okay. So, boop, 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 wonky. So we gotta, we gotta space these a little bit better. Let's go back to 0.425. My math skills are not working today, apparently. Let's see what happens with this. There we go. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this to see to see what I can get away with. Okay. Huh. All right. So let's see. Conspiracy media. Hello, welcome, brother. I know I'm not interacting with everybody uh, a lot. I'm, I'm working here, so. Um, all right, so I've got to space these. Um, <laughs> I've got to get these uh, uh, strings spaced exactly right. And obviously you can see we can kind of test some, some markings and um, you know try some things out and see if we can find the right uh, distance between uh, strings. Uh, Wow. Glad you guys, I appreciate you guys saying that. Uh, it's really nice to be able to share this with folks. Um, 
Now I live in a small town and I'd, I'd love to find a young person who was interested in learning a trade like this, but I think, uh, now here I go being an old guy, but uh, I think kids would rather play on their cell phones in most cases. Just getting rid of my original marks here. Hello. All right. Well, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to space these by eye. I'm not going to measure anything. Get my old marks off of there very carefully, delicately. Center two marks are a little too close. What do you think? How's that look? It looks straight. Cell phones or video games. I got you, bro. You could learn a trade like this. and Although, I fell in love with it. So, you know, what can I say? So, I've got a good spacing here. Um, so, I think, uh, basically, I've got a, a, um, I've got a uh, preemptive strike on starting to get this set up. Um, it's time for me to go eat lunch. Um, I know I've kind of been on and off a little bit, but that's how i got to do it. I'm at work. Uh, so... Um, I'm going to um, head home, grab a bite to eat. I'll have the rest of the day uh, and evening off of work, so probably should pick up a guitar and record something, huh? Write something. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I would love to find a young person uh, in my community that's interested and would have the time to come down and become an apprentice. Um, I was an apprentice plumber, took four years of school uh, to learn how to do that stuff, and this art form, uh, you know, while a lot of people have YouTube channels showing their repair work, um, not just anybody can do it or should do it, I think in a lot of cases, but there are some really good guys out there. Uh, a couple of shout outs right now. Jerry Rosa, sub subscribe to his channel. Um, let's see, Guitologist. Uh, I don't know if you want to subscribe to his channel. If you're into politics and that sort of stuff, go ahead. Um, Shango 066, another one that if you enjoy uh, politics, go ahead and join us, but you can learn a lot about electronics um, if you can avoid the politics involved in his channel. Um, who else? Uncle Doug. Uh, definitely subscribe to all of those channels. Uncle Doug is a magician when it comes to restoring vintage amplifiers. Um, let's see. <clears throat> definitely check out Metalhead Hippie if you want to get your music heard. Uh, Ron Ward Indie Music Live. Uh, go check them out. Sub subscribe to Hetriani. Subscribe to the Falcro. Subscribe to Hugh Caldwell. Subscribe to Rody's Jam Cage. Hit the notification bell. Find a playlist on those channels and push play and let their music just play for hours and get their watch time up. Help your fellow uh, YouTuber get their watch time up because that's how people are able to get paid for this hard work that they put into these. Um, you know, I'm not looking to make any money on YouTube, but if it happens, it happens. Um, uh, oh, you. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> It'd be fun to have you here, Hat. Um, you know, one of the things, um, and I, I'm not going to spend too much more time talking about this, but one of the things that... Um, is would be difficult uh, at this point for me to have an apprentice it would be the amount of work that I have uh, to, available to me there would be a lot of time spent literally just watching because I don't have um, such a pile of guitars that um, 
I can just turn somebody loose doing a string change, which requires a lot of learning to do it right. Um, you know, it's not something that you learn the first time you do it. Uh, so um, it'd be it'd be really great to um, to be able to have an apprentice here. I would love that. Um, Oh, perfect. Hey, uh, send me a link or I'll visit your channel. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of playlists, I think, that have, I don't know, 50 plus uh, pieces of music on them. And if you just go in and just push play on the playlist and let the playlist roll in the background, leave a tab open on your computer, you can help your um, fellow YouTubers get their watch time up to the point that they can monetize. Uh, so. I'm, I've seen a big uh, increase in time watched uh, once I hit that thousand mark, and I got to thank Jack, um, Jack Flash, uh, and Tim for their um, endorsement. And um, with that, um, yeah, and remember hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'm gonna head out. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Peace.